Hello again and welcome to From the Desk Of. I am Tim Moody. I'm the Public Information Officer with the Randolph County School System. And again, I'm here with our Superintendent, Dr. Stephen Ganey. And we are thankful again for the opportunity to, to meet our audience and share with you some of the things that are going on in our school system. And Dr. Ganey, as is usually the case, there are a whole lot of things going on. We had uh, an important board meeting a couple of days ago uh, and want to spend a few moments just talking about some of the things that came out of that meeting. Very significant because we had a swearing in of, of some new members and we also had election of a new chair and vice chair. So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, Monday night was a, a big night. Uh, we started with our work session uh, with informational items, and then we moved to the swearing in of three board members. Miss Emily Coltrane was sworn in. She had ar was already on our board and had been reelected. Uh, Mr. Brian Biggs and Mr. Fred Burgess were sworn in there, two new board members. And um, that was an exciting time for the school system, for their families, and for, for the board as a whole. Uh, and then we went into, as we got into the board meeting, we went into what's called our annual board meeting. Uh, annually, in the, uh, at the December meeting, we have elections for board chair and board vice chair, and um, those elections were held, and uh, Mr. Todd Cutler is now our board chair, and Mr. Gary Cook is now our board vice chair. So uh, several things, you know, in addition to normal business that we had to uh, conduct with the board with different items on the agenda, um, we had these special events, the board reorganization and the um, uh, swearing into those new board members. And uh, as is also the case for each of our board meetings, we spend a significant amount of time doing recognitions for students and teachers in our system who have accomplished certain things. And in addition to the STAR three awards that we do, uh, we had a special recognition of some signature schools, uh, PTEC signature schools. Can you tell us a little bit about those schools and what they did to receive that accolade? Well, two, th two things uh, about those two schools was they had a uh, double-digit increase in their proficiency um, scores from in 13-14 compared to 12-13 uh, uh, school year, and they also uh, exceeded the growth expectations, and it was the two schools recognized was uh, Trendale Elementary School was led by uh, Kim Leake, and Providence Grove High School led by Brad Walston, and, and um, I think they're two very good represent, representations of the 31 schools in this school system, and, and very proud of them. We actually had attended on Friday, the previous Friday, a breakfast where the staff at those schools were honored, and, and uh, Brad Walston and Kim Leake were recognized there as well. As for the Piedmont Triad Consortium uh, had a breakfast and recognized signature schools throughout the region. So uh, it was kind of the second event where they were recognized. It was neat because I don't think we ever can do enough to recognize the great work by teachers and, and principals. Um, we, we try hard, but um, I'm of the belief that if you haven't walked in their shoes, you've not really experienced the great things they do every day, because they do so many things that they don't even realize. Uh, it's just so much, it's such part of their normal day now, once you get in this profession. And I just think we, we um, we just don't, we can never do enough to, yeah. to thank them for the great work they do, whether it be these two schools or in any of the other 29, other 29 schools in our system or the other ones in the state of North Carolina. Right. Well, and one of the ways that teachers do get rewarded is through grants. And we were able to recognize a number of schools and a number of teachers at the board meeting with some grants that, uh, some check money that we handed out. Uh, through the Randolph County School System endowment. So can you tell us a little bit about what that's all about? Well, the, the teachers apply for the grants and, and it's interesting to watch um, the different uh, plans they have for that money and that was listed, you know, whether it be for this science classroom or, or uh, this reading project um, that they're planning on doing with this teacher or that teacher. It's just exciting to see teachers. I mean, teachers, Again, it goes back to what I just said. Teachers are always looking to do anything they can to help children. Right. And, and a teacher taking the initiative to apply for a grant is just another one of those examples. And this grant is funded, uh, these grants are funded from, from the endowment, which uh, we have a golf tournament once a year that is uh, very well attended. I've seen two of them now and, and very well attended. And 
and money from that, proceeds from that, wind up um, going into uh, the endowment. And, and I just think it's a neat thing. It started well before my time, mm -hmm. um, and I admire the people who, who had the um, initiative to start this, uh, this uh, process, but it's, it's a good thing for our school system. Dr. Ganey, our board meeting for uh, January is scheduled for January the 13th, and I know on, at that uh, particular meeting, uh, things are going to be a bit different. We're going to start a little bit earlier. We have some special guests and, and, and a special work session. Can you tell us what's going to happen on that day? And that's going to be a very exciting day, and, and what it brings back memories to me is last year's January meeting, which was January 14th. Mm -hmm. um, that was a meeting, and we're going to follow the same pattern this time where we sat down with the county commissioners. We had our board members, county commissioners, and leadership team at the table and we talked about what were, we gave them a forecast of what our budget requests were going to be to them for um, local monies and um, we just had a conversation and I thought it was a, a, a very a productive meeting. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it um, and, and I say it, it's a good picture of what I get to see every day. I mean I, I, I work every day with school system staff members, whether it be at school school level, or central service level. But I hope in all of this, we don't get lost in what we have, which is really special here. Um, so first of all, every day, probably any time of the day I need to, I have seven board members who I can have conversation with about mm -hmm. uh, issues in the school system or or share, share what I'm thinking or get thoughts from them on certain issues. Uh, that was the same for the two board members who just uh, left the board, uh, Tommy McDonald and Gary Mason. So that's kind of the best of all worlds for a superintendent. And then you go to, there's five other individuals which are tremendous, um, and we have a county, this group of county commissioners. Uh, the fact that they will come over and have a conversation with us. And, and I feel very um, comfortable calling them and talking to them at any time about anything, uh, issues we may have, whether it be needs or thoughts and getting their thoughts on things. And, and, and we lost a county commissioner uh, this past, less, past election as well, uh, Mr. Harold Holmes, and, and he was the same way, very open to conversation at pretty much any time. And then uh, why I say this is such a big day, because it's a good example of what we have going, because then on top of that, we have four legislators who, between Jerry Tillman, Alan McNeil, Pat Hurley, and Rick Gunn, I feel completely comfortable calling them at any time talking to them about our needs. So I hope um, this is a good, to others, this is a good example of the willingness of the Board of Education to have conversation with school system, staff members, administration, county commissioners' willingness to do that, and the legislators, because I'm not sure that's the case everywhere. Right. And, and whether it is or isn't, I'm just proud it is the case here. Right. Um, and I know from staff's end, the only way we can keep to get, keep getting better is to continue to have these conversations with these individuals and continue to earn their trust. And you don't earn trust over six months. You don't earn trust over a year or 18 months. You earn trust over the long term. And so um, to me, this is just, you know, this will be another one of those special days. I don't know if we mentioned on the last um, tel uh, interview or not, but on November 24th, our legislators came and sat at the table with us and had a conversation with the leadership team and the board members. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, to me, is powerful and speaks volumes for those two groups, as well as my board of education that I work with, very that, that are willing to sit down and, and with these groups. So I, I just think that um, I'm looking forward to uh, January 13th. Obviously, the holidays are exciting, but there's a lot of things that are exciting that are going to come after the holidays for this school system, and, and that's one of the first big events. Okay, so now, Dr. Ganey, I would like to talk about technology for a moment, and it seems like in almost every interview that we do, um, technology in some fashion comes up, and it's so prevalent in our schools. But we have an initiative now where, for the first time, students can bring their own technology into the classroom represents a fundamental change in, in the way that we do school and, and it's exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about this initiative and the impact you think it will have on the classroom? Well, Tim, we dealt with this initiative back with the board. Um, I think we did a presentation either September 
October board meeting, and, and it's something we've been working on for a while. In fact, technology department was working on it before, my t before I arrived 18 months ago. Uh, we wanted to make sure we did this initiative correctly and had the proper parameters around it. Um, it, it is exciting, and in many ways it will be experimental. Uh, anybody who tells you we know now how it's going to turn out months from now, and I, I think that would be, I don't think we can, we can really uh, forecast that. Right now we have in place, because it did take a certain amount, we had to do some work at each school so there'd be compa capacity on the uh, network to be able to handle this. Uh, the middle schools and high schools are prepared for this. Um, and so now if a child brings uh, their individual technology in and they want to use it, they sign on as a guest to our network. There's also an agreement they have to sign off on and, and, and the parents uh, with the agreement of the parameters they will operate within with their own technology. Uh, we're hoping after the holidays to have somewhere soon after the holidays to have the capacity in place so we can go this route with the elementary schools as well. We went with the high school and middle schools first because they were done as far as the capacity piece and we didn't want to hold up two levels waiting for the third one but um, I, I just, uh, is it, it's going to allow more resource, technology resources to be used in the classroom. Uh, I think it's going to be an adjustment period for teachers. Uh, probably not as much for, for the children because they're going to be using the device if they bring it, they're going to be using one they're familiar with. Right. But I just think it's going to, we, we need to give the teachers, um, be sensitive to their adjustment to, to this issue now. It's not going to be a piece of technology that they've handed to the child to, to use. They're now going to be interacting with one that the child has brought in. And so um, I think it's just another, um, in many ways, wave of the future. You know, um, what is technology now? Uh, it's not just a computer, you know, and, and, and where were we 15 years ago about what we said technology was versus now what we say it is. 15 years ago, technology was in many ways a graphics calculator. Well, it's not just a graphics calculator anymore that you're bringing right. in. So uh, I, I think it's a very similar parallel to the days when you were allowing children to bring their own calculator uh, first to class, then to be used on the state test, mm -hmm. and I think it's a very similar parallel. It's just a, we're, we've gone 15 years out, and here we are with this. Okay. In two days, we, um, we take our holiday break, and I guess by the time this airs, we'll actually probably be on our break. And, uh, you know, I know that's a, a, a good time for all of us, um, and for you, you know, to take a break with your family, but I also suspect watching you every day and the energy that you bring to your, to your role, that there's some things that you miss when we're on break. What do you miss when you're not at work and what will you look forward to getting back to when we resume on January 5th? Well, Tim, I'm gonna be around family, of course, so I'll be around people, but I miss the people when we're all, you know, we all go our different ways. Um, and, and that's what this business is about. It's about the, the first grader who pulls you by the arm when you're walking down the hall in a school and wants to say hey to you, or the, the, you, know, you go in the classroom and there's the fourth grader and you're seeing what they're doing, or the high school child, you're seeing what they're working on. I, I miss that because that's the environment, that's, that, that's my environment. That is, um, and that's what all of us educators, we're, we're, we, we gravitate to mm -hmm. is that environment. So I'll miss that because um, I've, I've always said schools were built to have teachers and kids in them. And so, um, you know, when they're vacant in the summer, that's an odd view for me. When they're vacant during these long holidays breaks, that's odd. But, um, you know, seeing what the second half of the school year brings will be, will be uh, exciting too because I think we are, like I said earlier, we're getting better. We're driving forward. Mm -hmm. We're building relationships. Um, we, we all know we started the school year with 11 schools with new principals. And so the relationships have got to be much more developed than they were back in August and July. And so with every day, we're, we're gonna keep getting better. And it's just, it's an exciting time for the school system. So yeah, the holiday break. I want the excitement to keep going in schools. I know that some people, <laughs> they want their holiday and I, got, I understand that. But um, it's an exciting time for this school system. So, um. Well, Dr. Ganey, thank you. And I also wanted to say thank you to our audience, again, for giving us the opportunity uh, to share what's going on in the Randolph County school system. 
and we wish uh, each and everyone uh, a happy holiday season.